This is um, page five and six, or the proofs from page five and six I'm going to do on here. Um, I just wanted to zoom out so you see where we were. So these were the four bottom proofs on page five, and then there were four more proofs on page six. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in now on the first one. So um, two column proofs. And the one thing to keep in mind in this, right, this one's the one with the typo. So this should have been um, 103. So let's start with our statements and our reasons. First step in any proof is you're given. So we're given two things. We're given that A is parallel to B, right? This is our parallel symbol. So line A is parallel to line B. Okay, those lines are parallel. We're also given that the measure of angle one is 103 degrees. Okay, and the reason for that is that it is given. All of these proofs have a very similar style to them. So we have our list of definitions, properties, postulates, and theorems that we can use. Okay, so um, first thing we want to do is um, we want to see if we can go directly from one to two. And what kind of angle pair we have. So we have alternate exterior angles. So let's use the alternate exterior angle theorem. Okay, the alternate exterior angle theorem. Okay, this theorem tells us that if the lines are parallel, the alternate exterior angles are congruent. So here we have the lines are parallel. So it meets our initial condition. So since the lines are parallel, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle two. And again, we want to distinguish between angle one and the measure of angle one. This is the name of the angle. This is the measure of the angle. That's a number. It represents the, the value, the measure of the angle. This is the name for the angle. So if we look at the theorem, on our reference sheet, it talks about how alternate exterior angles are congruent, not equal to each other. It doesn't say anything about their measures. It just says that the angles are congruent. Angle one is not equal to angle two. They're clearly two separate angles. Their measures are equal, but they're not equal. Um, and their measures being equal is nowhere in the alternate exterior angle theorem. All the exterior angle theorem says is if the lines are parallel, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. Okay, and since our lines are parallel, the alternate in, the alternate exterior angles are congruent by our alternate exterior angles. Then our third step is to use what we know about congruence, right? Our definition of congruence. And if we read it right off the reference sheet, okay, it's the first one on there. It says having the exact same size and shape and thereby having the exact same measure. So the definition of congruence tells us that their measures are equal. So since they are congruent, angle one and angle two are congruent, their measures are equal. So now we use the measure of angle one. And we say it's equal to the measure of angle two. Because again, angle one is not equal to angle two. They're two separate angles. They're not the same thing. They're not equal. The measure of angle one represents the measure of the angle. It's a value. It's a number. So this value is equal to the value for the measure of angle two. So if this was 120, this would also be 120. They're values. These are values. These are the names of the angles. So the names of the angles are congruent. The values are equal. But we already have the measure of angle one here. So we can substitute it in. So we're going to write the exact same thing, except we're going to replace 103 with the measure of angle 1. That's called substitution, the substitution property of equality. Substitution 
property of equality. So we have the measure of angle one equals measure of angle two, but we also were given that the measure of angle one equals 103, so we can replace it. In. For my purposes, that's fine. If we want to make this perfect, though, we would use the symmetric property okay, to switch them around so it matches up our state. But I'm very happy if you have this part. We don't necessarily need this. Well, yeah, we don't necessarily need this. Okay. So there's our first proof. Let's go on to the next one, which is very similar. It's almost the same thing. Except instead of alternate exterior angles, you're going to have corresponding angles. So let's start with our statements and our reasons. Should be a different color. Statements. And our reasons. Okay, we start with our given every time. Okay, we're given that line A is parallel to line B. And we're also given that the measure of angle three is 64. So our first step we're looking for is what angle pair do we have? We have corresponding angles, so we're going to use the corresponding angle theorem or the corresponding angle postulate officially. If you call it theorem, I don't care. And that says if the lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are congruent. So are the lines parallel? Yes, they are. So if they're parallel and they are, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So we can say that angle three is congruent to angle four. Again, this does not tell us that the measures are equal. It does not tell us that the angles are equal. It tells us that the angles are congruent. That's what it says on your reference sheet and in our notes. It says that if the lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, but we know what congruent means, so we can use the definition of congruence which is also on the reference sheet, and that tells us that congruent angles have the same measure, the exact same measure. So we can say the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 4 because they are congruent. Okay. Follows directly from step 2. If they're equal to each other, we have an equation. Okay. And we already know the measure of angle 3, and that's going to be 64. So you can substitute that in. We can use substitution. So instead of writing the measure of angle 3, we can write 64 because we know the measure of angle 3 equals 64. So we put 64 equals the measure of angle 4. And that's good enough. That's fine. We can stop there. I'm happy. If you want to make it perfect or better, not perfect, but better, we can say the measure of angle 4 equals 64 by the symmetric property. is on our reference sheet. It's actually not. Transitives on there, though, but not symmetric. Okay. Well, anyways, that's good. You don't need the last step if you don't want it. I'm happy. Let's go to the third one. Again, this is going to be very similar, except it's a little different because we have supplementary angles, not congruent angles. So let's write our statements and our given statements and our reasons. So first we have our given. And our given is that A is parallel to B, and we're also given that the measure of angle 5 equals 112. And we start out the exact same way. What is an angle pair? What angle pair do we have? Well, they're on the same side of the transversal. They're in between the two parallel lines. 
they're same side interior angles. So we're, we're consecutive interior. You can call them the same. It means the same thing. Um, so we can use our same side interior angle theorem or our consecutive angle theorem, whichever you prefer. I'm always going to use same side interior because I prefer it. Same side interior angle theorem. And that theorem says that the angles are supplementary. If you read the um, theorem on the reference sheet, it does not say anything about adding up to 180. It doesn't say anything about their angle measures. All it says is that the angles are supplementary. So all we can conclude from this theorem is that since the lines are parallel, the same side interior angles are supplementary. So we're going to say angle 5 and angle 6 are supplementary. Okay, but we know what supplementary means, and if we don't, we can look at the reference sheet. It means any two angles that have a sum of 180. So we can use that definition of supplementary. Okay, that says that supplementary angles have a sum of 180. So we can take their angle measures here, the measure of angle 5, and add it to the measure of angle 6, and set it equal to 180. That's what the definition of supplementary tells us. So it did not tell us that in the same side interior angle theorem. All that said was that angle 5 and angle 6 are supplementary. And then we, since they are supplementary, we know that their angle measures add up to 180. Just like 1 and 2, we're now going to substitute in what we know. We know that the measure of angle 5 is 112. So we're going to replace the measure of angle 5 and put 112 because those are equal. So we're substituting. That is... Um, Institution. And again, that's not our last step because it doesn't say the measure of angle 6 equals 68, but we can get there in one step. If we were to subtract 112 from both sides, we would get the measure of angle 6 equals 68, which is what we're trying to prove. And the reason or how we got that was by doing the subtraction property <coughs> of equal. So subtraction property of equality. There you go. Okay. What angle pair do we have? It's either going to be congruent or supplementary. In this case, it's supplementary. So therefore, we use the definition of supplementary to set up our equation. If they were congruent, you would use the definition of congruence to set their angle measures equal to each other. But supplementary, that means they add up to 180, the angle measures. Then we substitute in, just like we would do with the congruent one. And then this time we have to do an extra step of subtraction. Subtracting from both sides. Okay, number four is going to take the ones from one and two, and then the proof from three, and it's going to combine them together. Okay, it's saying given A is parallel to B... Um, so we're going to have to kind of put it all together. Um, so statements, reasons. This one's probably going to take eight steps. So make sure you have enough room. Okay. First step is always you're given. Okay. And we are given that A is parallel to B and that the measure of angle 7 equals 93. So they're giving us, they labeled angle 7, 8, and 9 for us, which makes it easy because we know we're going to have to go to 8 first and then 9. We don't have an angle relationship between 7 and 9, so we have to go in an indirect way. So angle 7 and angle 8 are vertical angles, so that's our angle relationship, our first one. Um, so we're going to use the vertical angle theorem. So vertical angle theorem. Okay, the vertical angle theorem says vertical angles are congruent. So we know that angle 7 is congruent to angle 8. Again, angle 7 is not equal to angle 8. The measure of angle 7 is not equal to the measure of angle 8. All the vertical angle theorem says is vertical angles are congruent. So we name the angles, say they're congruent. That's all we can say with that. But we can use the definition of congruent again is on our reference sheet and again we did exactly the same thing in number one and number two we can use the definition of congruent 
to say that the measure of angle seven equals the measure of angle eight. Because the definition of congruent is that congruent angles, their measures are exactly the same. Their measures are equal. That's what congruent means. So again, same process. And then we can substitute in. We know the measure of angle seven. We know it's 93. So we can substitute that in. And instead of putting the measure of angle seven, we can put 93 because we know they're equal. And that's going to be equal to the measure of angle eight. That is substitution. So this is exactly like number one and two. Okay, but now we have to do two steps. So now we went from seven to eight. We got the measure of angle eight. Now we have to go from eight to nine. So what angle pair do we have? We have same side interior angle. So we're going to use the same side interior angle theorem. Again, you can abbreviate these, SSIAT. But the same side interior angle theorem says if the lines are parallel, so they are, A and B are parallel, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. So we can do angle 8 and angle 9 are supplementary. Again, this does not tell us that the angles add up to 180. It does not tell us that the measure of the angles are equal or anything like that. All it says is that the measure, if the lines are parallel, which they are, because it was given, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. But we know what supplementary means just like we know what congruent means. We know that supplementary means the angle measures add up to 180. So we can do the measure of angle 8 plus the measure of angle 9 equals 180. That's our definition of supplementary. And we already know what the measure of angle 8 is, so we're going to do another substitution. And instead of putting the measure of angle 8, we're going to put 93. So 93 plus the measure of angle 9 equals 180. Okay, and that is substitution. Okay, and again, we're trying to prove that the measure of angle 9 is 87, so we get there by doing subtraction. We subtract 93 from both sides. So this is going to be the measure of angle 9 equals 87. And we get that by doing the subtraction property of equality, which is subtracting from both sides. So I want to highlight here and then we're done. We're good after that because we've proven what we were trying to prove. Okay, but I want to highlight this is exactly like number one and number two. It's the exact same process. And down here is exactly like number three. It's the exact same process. We're just putting it together because we have to do two. We have to can't go directly from seven to nine, so we have to go indirectly through eight. So we gotta go from seven to eight, which is like number one and two. And then we have to go from eight to nine, which is exactly like number three. This number four just puts them all together. Okay, so let's then do the proofs on the back on page six. So let's look at the four proofs from page six. Uh, probably need to zoom out maybe a little. Okay. I'm going to have to write smaller maybe. Or, you know, we can... I have so um you can have it in your notes but right? you have the packet so or you should have the packet so we can zoom in okay, so this is page six okay page uh, six looks like such okay so the first one here um, we want to prove that the that x equals 8. So they already wrote the given in for us. So we didn't have to rewrite it all. Awfully kind of them. Because that's a lot of given. So our process is exactly the same. We do the exact same thing here to start as we did for the other ones. We look for our angle pair. And if we look at angle 1 and angle 2 in, this, in the diagram, again, it's not up here because um, it's not going to fit. Okay, but if we look at one and two, those are corresponding angles. So we're going to use the corresponding angle theorem.
same process. We're going to use the corresponding angle theorem or postulate, whatever you prefer. It doesn't really matter to me. I don't think it's that important. So it's the corresponding angle postulate. That tells us if the lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. Well, are the lines parallel? Yes, they are. That was given to us. Line M is parallel to line N. Um, those are the ones being cut by the transversal. So since they are um, parallel, the corresponding angles are congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And we know what congruent means. We know the definition of congruent. It tells us that congruent angles have the same measure. So we're going to use the definition of congruence again. Okay, and that's going to tell us that the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. We have the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2 that we can substitute in. So here's the measure of angle 1. We can substitute it in here. Here's the measure of angle 2. So we can substitute it in there. So our next step is going to be substitution. Okay, so instead of angle, measure of angle 1, we're going to put 9x plus 13, because those are equal. And instead of measure of angle 2, we're going to put 11x minus 3. From there, we're going to use our algebraic properties to solve. So we need to do subtraction we need to subtract 9x from both sides. So when we do that, we get 13 equals 2x minus 3. That's the subtraction property of equality. Then we need to add 3 to both sides. When we do that, we get 16 equals 2x. So we have to add 3 to both sides. That is the addition property of equality. And then we can divide each side by 2. So that's going to give us 8 equals x. And that is the division property of equality. And that's what we were trying to prove. We were trying to prove that x equals 8. And again, we could use the symmetric property to make it perfect if we wanted to. We don't have to. Um, but we could. If 8 equals x, then x equals yeah. x. Right, and that's what we were trying to prove. We were trying to prove x equals 8, which is what we did. Okay. Right, let's go to the next one. Number 2. You want to look at the diagram real quick in case you don't have your packet. Uh, it looks like this. So angle 3 and angle 4 are same side interior angles, so that's where we're going to start. After our given, which they have written all down, and we're proving that measure of angle 4 is 60 degrees. Okay. So after we write all that given down, we start with what angle pair we got. And we have a same side interior angle, so we're going to use the same side, same side interior angle theorem. Okay, which tells us same si if the lines are parallel, which they are, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. So we're going to say angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary because that's what the theorem tells us. It does not tell us they add up to 180. Okay. Um, but we know what supplementary means, so let's use the definition of supplementary. Definition of supplementary, again, I can read it again if you want. It tells us any two angles that have a sum of 180 degrees. So the angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary. Their measures, angle measures, add up to 180. And then we can substitute in. So same process over and over and over again. Given what theorem are we using? What relationship do we have? 
And then is it congruent or supplementary? If it's supplementary, use the definition of supplementary. If it was congruent, use the definition of congruent. And then we can substitute in the information we have. So we have measure of angle three is 20x minus three. Measure of angle four is 9x plus nine. So plus 9x plus 9 equals 180. Um, and again, we can do addition here or combine like terms. It's fine if you want to put combine like terms. Um, let's do combine like terms. Not official, but um, we all agreed we would use that as a shortcut. So let's do it. 29x plus 6 equals 180. Okay, then we can use the subtraction property of equality to get 29x equals 174. That is the subtraction. We're subtracting 6 from both sides. It's the subtraction property of equality. Then we can use the division property of equality, right? We can divide each side by 29. So we're going to get x equals, so 30, 60, 90, 180, this looks like uh, 6. 30 times 6 is 180, and then minus 6 because it's 29, not 30. So that's the division property of equality. But we're not looking for x. We're not trying to prove that x equals 6. We're trying to prove that the measure of angle 4 equals 63. So let's finish our proof. So we know the measure of angle 4 is 9x plus 9. So let's substitute. So we have the measure of angle 4 equals. We're going to replace the x with the 6. Substitute that 6 in for that x. So we're going to get 9 times 6 plus 9. That's substitution. Um, and again, here we could do combined like terms if we want. That's fine. Um, or we can do measure angle 4 equals 54 plus 9, multiplication. And then we can do addition. Um, 54 plus 9 is going to give us 62, which is what we're trying to do. So the process was the same. Have her given what angle pair do we have? What's the definition of supplementary? Substitute, and then use your algebraic properties to solve. The third one, I'm gonna look real quick. Um, Uh, here's our diagram. We're trying to prove that the measure of angle CHF is 78. So CHF is this angle down here. And uh, BGE is this angle up here. So we're looking at alternate exterior angles. We're looking at alternate exterior angles. So our first step is always our given. Okay, second step is what angle relationship do we have? We just said those were alternate exterior angles. So we're going to use the alternate exterior angle theorem. Alternate exterior angle theorem. And the alternate exterior angle theorem tells us that if the lines are parallel, which they are, the alternate exterior angles are congruent. So our angles were, what were they? Um, oh, BGE. So angle BGE is congruent to angle CHF. 
by the alternate exterior angle theorem. If the lines are parallel, the alternate exterior angles are congruent. And we know what the definition of congruent is. We've been doing it over and over now. We know the definition of congruent means that they have the same angle measure. So we know the measure of angle BGD is equal to the measure of angle CHI. Then again, same thing, we can substitute in our givens. Substitution measure of angle BG is 7x minus 6. Measure of angle CHF is 5x plus 18. There we go. Now we can do our algebra. Let's do subtraction property of equality and subtract 5x from both sides. So it's going to be 2x minus 6 equals 18. That's the subtraction property of equality. So subtraction property of equality. Okay, we can add 6 to both sides. So we get 2x equals 24. I think that's the addition property of equality. We're adding to both sides, and then we can divide by 2, and we get x equals 12. That's the division property of equality. Division property of equality. The proof is asking us to prove that the measure of angle CHF is 78. So we can substitute now. Okay. So the measure of angle CHF is going to be equal to 5 times 12 plus 18. That substitution if this was given to us now we have x so we can substitute it in 5 times 12 plus 18 so we know the measure of angle CHF is going to equal 60 plus 18 okay that's multiplication And we know then that 60 plus 18, the measure of angle CHF is going to equal 78, and that is addition. Okay, and that's what we're trying to prove. So same process, start with your given. What angle pair do we have? We had alternate exterior angles this time, so they were congruent. Congruent means that their angle measures are equal. We substitute it, use our algebraic properties, substitute it back in to the original, use our algebraic properties, and we get our We have one more. Okay, this one is very similar to number four from page five. Let's quickly look at the diagram. So this is like number four because we're going to have to do two steps. So um, we're going to start at one, one to two. Those are corresponding angles. So we're going to use the corresponding angle theorem. And then we're going to go from two to three. Those are same side interior angles. So we're going to be two parts. We got to do corresponding and then same side interior. So let's start with our corresponding angle theorem or postulate, corresponding angle postulate. So here's our given. Okay, next step is to use our angle relationship. So the first one, angle one and angle two are corresponding. So we use our corresponding angle postulate. Okay, the corresponding angle postulate or corresponding angle theorem tells us that if the lines are parallel, which they are, M and N are parallel. Therefore, the corresponding angles are congruent. So angle one is going to be congruent to angle two. 
And what does congruent mean? Congruent means that the angle measures are equal. This is the sixth time I'm doing these today, or at least some of them. So congruent means that the angle measures are equal. So the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two. Well, we know the measure of angle one is 130, so we can substitute that in. And we get 130 equals the measure of angle 2. That is called substitution. Substitution. Well, we don't want to solve the measure of angle 2. We want to solve the measure of angle 3. So now we need to go from 2 to 3. So we know 2 and 3 are same side interior angles. They're both on the same side of the... of um, line N there, and they're in between line S and T, so they're same side interior angles, so we're going to use the same side interior angle theorem. So same side interior angle theorem, or consecutive interior angle theorem, whichever you prefer. And so the same side interior angle theorem says that if the lines are parallel, so in this case lines S and T, it's S and R, S and R, if lines S and R are parallel, which they are, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. So again, this does not say that their angle measures are 180 or add up to 180. All it says is that they are supplementary. So we know that angle two, by this theorem, angle two and angle three are supplementary. Okay, but we know what supplementary means. We know supplementary angles are angles whose sum add up to 180, whose angle measures add up to 180. So we know the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180. We also know that the measure of angle 2 is 130 degrees. So we can say 130 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 by substitution. And then we are one step away. So now we have to subtract 130 from both sides. So that measure of angle 3 equals 50. That is the subtraction property of equality because we're subtracting from both sides. Okay, so let me write that better. Fifty. Okay, 180 minus 130 is 50. And that's what we're trying to prove. So we're good. So it's basically, um, again, we kind of break it down into two parts. So this was 1 to 2. And this is 2 to 3. So that helps us get um, the measure of angle 3 is 50. Okay, and that, those are the proofs from page 5 and page 6.